Thanks for joining with us. All right, I have Jeffrey Hazlett. He is the chairman and CEO of C Suite Network. Jeffrey, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you, and thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm back home in my my home office in South Dakota, so it's a pleasure to be able to talk to you today. I'm glad you're here. I'm also very happy to be a part of your family, having my podcast up on your network. Uh, give our audience some background on you, and then I want to talk, if we may, about hero leadership. Absolutely. Well, you know, I've been a Fortune 100 officer of a major corporation, Kodak. I left there about 10 years ago and started the C-Suite Network. I bought and sold about 250 companies in my career, about $25 billion. I've had my own primetime show on Bloomberg. I've been a judge on Celebrity Apprentice uh, for a number of years. I, I, I do my own podcast. Now I'm leading the C-Suite Network, which is made up of the Hero Club you mentioned, one of our many communities that we have in um, our C-Suite Network. And then, of course, we own C-Suite TV, C-Suite Radio. Uh, we're the largest business uh, network for uh, content today, uh, reaching out to business. And we're so glad to have you and your show as part of that. And then we do about uh, 60 meetings around the year and provide a lot of services to a lot of businesses. And uh, on my in my free time, I serve on about 14 uh, different corporate boards, uh, some of which I own, and many of which I just invest in. That's a lot of work. I know the I know the feeling about that. And I'm not, I'm not on 14 boards. Tell me about hero leadership. Yeah, you know, I uh, a couple of years ago, I was approached by a gentleman by the name of Rob Ryan who sold his company back in 1998 for $20.4 billion. That's with a B. And when he sold that company, he set aside a percentage of his company for all of his employees and making the single largest number of millionaires ever created in one day. And in fact, that record has held up until this day. And that it was the biggest transaction up until tech transaction up until Microsoft bought LinkedIn 17 years later in 2016 for 24 billion. Well, all these employees would run up to Mr. Ryan and say, well, Mr. Ryan, you don't know me. I'm the night watchman and my wife's mother uh, has got cancer. She has no insurance. I can pay for the operation. Uh, you're my hero. Or, you know, Mr. Ryan, I'm the night janitor and I can send my kids to college. Uh, you're my hero. And so Rob and his wife, Terry, who was the chief legal officer at the time, didn't need to do that, but they decided that's what they wanted to do. And, um, and so they decided to start a group called the Hero Club. Well, a couple of, they, they ran it for a number of years and built it up to about 20, 30 people, but couldn't get the scale, saw what we were doing with the C-Suite Network and then offered it to us. And so when we took it, we said, well, what can we do to make this bigger? What can we do to make this more of a, of a movement? And what separates hero companies? What makes hero companies? And what, what, what makes that happen? And so we focused on companies that have values. And wherever we companies operate with great values, where they put people over profit, not saying that you have to, you know, 10% of your company needs to go to charity, 10% of your company needs to go to your employees, do whatever you want to do, but live within values. And by doing so, um, these companies, these, these hero companies run by hero leaders actually gross more money than the other companies in their industry. They um, make more money than any of the companies in their industry. They have employees who are happier. They have customers who are more engaged and they have vendors who want to do with them, do more business with them. And more importantly, they're revered in their communities for all the things that they do. And that's really the difference. That's what makes that what we call the hero factor. And it's a movement that's really taken off. I wrote a book around it uh, called The Hero Factor. What in indeed separates these companies from other companies, from, from uh, wannabes, from do-gooders, from good co's, from um, asshats, and then um, you know bottom liners. And not to say that any of those companies are bad. Each of them, well, asshats are kind of bad. But the rest of them are all trying to do their very best to do what they can. But really, the hero companies stand out amongst all others. 
Now, um, there's a, a central theme that we see throughout all, the entire marketing genre right now. It's called being authentic. Can you address that? Well, I, I don't know how you can be anything but authentic and be real. I mean, and especially in today's world, as most companies have found out with social media, with disclosures of being public, or even if you're private, you know, you really have to live who you are. For a number of years, brands hid behind advertising, hid behind their persona of their brand, their their attributes of the brand, that their, their advertising communications. And of course, today that's all being level set by social media, level set by disclosure by the digital models. And so it's really truly being about who you really are. So unless you're a company that starts to operate with real values, you're gonna be found out fairly quickly. And people are gonna find out that they don't wanna do business with you or that you're different than what you say you are. And that's really what a brand is. A brand is nothing but a promise delivered. And that's what we're starting to see. So to be an authentic brand or an authentic company, uh, you're living it every single day in your values. You're living it every day, single day in what you deliver and the way you deliver. And so therefore you're a much better company. Now, there's a lot of content out there throughout the world, but not all of it is focused as, as well as it should be. And one of the ways to scale what you're doing is through monetizing podcasts, books, and councils. You're very good at that. Give us some tips. Well, you know, uh, pick a genre, pick the things, the lanes that you're in. You know, I like to do what I call uh, step and repeat. That is, I like to take great things and then step and repeat that model over and over and over. And so what we've done is we created an ecosystem. And I found out uh, years ago that there are some great companies out there that operate very much like, uh, in fact, it was the CEO of Yammer uh, that said this on, on Bloomberg one day when I, was a, uh, when I was a contributing editor. He said, look at companies like Facebook, look at companies like Amazon, look at companies uh, that basically are like giant sequoias and they have these huge canopies and they become you know, like these huge ecosystems and underneath those canopies are all of these companies that start to operate and, and do business underneath that umbrella, that ecosystem. And that's really truly what we've done here with the C-Suite Network. We've created an ecosystem uh, based on a community, based on platforms so that you can you know, tell your message with a lot of products, services, events that we have, the TV shows, the podcast, and then really truly what we're becoming is a marketplace. And that's what companies like Amazon have done. That's companies like Facebook have done and many others that you see that operate very much like that. And so our, our goal is to be that giant Sequoia that provides for a trusted environment for all C-suite executives to exist, to ed be educated, to make connections, to network, and to get you know great information and to find great partners. And then we bring those great partners together. We bring that information together. We bring the systems together so that you know that it's a vetted, trusted network. And that's what we're trying to do. Now, you wrote a book. Thank you for that. You wrote a book, The Hero Factor. You mentioned it earlier today. I want you to give us some insights in that, but let's focus up and how you define leadership and how it's changed over the years and where, where really you want to see it go. Well, I think leadership has always been across the entire company. You can find people who are janitors, secretaries, and I'm not saying that they're the lowest positions, but typically in a hierarchical organization. But you can find strong leaders in those areas. And the key for most companies is to realize it doesn't just start in the C-suite. Great C-suite leaders realize that they can only be as good as their lowest common denominator or their weakest link. And so for them, what they want to do is empower people in their operations to make decisions that they would make. To, to take action as they would take that action, to live in values as they live in values. And by doing so, you have a company that's not where five or six people are the leader, but where five or 6,000 people that might work for you or all the people that work for you are leaders. And that's about creating that, again, that hero culture that really empowers people to live inside their values with diversity, inclusivity, and being able to take clear action and pick a side. I call that, it's a big thing in the book where I talk about pick a side. I don't care where you stand on issues, where you stand on things, but pick a side so that people know where you're going. And that's a great, great tra trait of a leader is by telling people where you're going and how to get there. Jeffrey, it's been a real pleasure to have you on the show. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Wow, this went fast. Thank you. I can't wait to come back.
Me too. All right. You've been watching CEO Money with Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining with us. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to YouTube, our YouTube channel.